I'm going to show you three tips you can use to learn how to draw dynamic poses. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to learn these tips. What's going on guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So good to see your smiling faces even though we're all staying at home but we're all just trying to figure out a way to keep ourselves busy and learn something new before this pandemic gives over. Today I'm going to show you guys how to draw dynamic poses and with all that talking let's just get right into it. So when it comes to posing characters there are usually three poses that a character takes and the first one is idle that's your idle character your character designs just character concepts where you just show the character's identity the character's clothes who the character is portraying the character through his pose through his poise making sure that we can understand who that character is just by looking at him now the second one is characters in motion that's when your character is moving more like a pin-up shot or a powerful punchy image to display the character doing his cool move doing his action moves all those kind of shots where you see your character leaping forward into the camera those are your action poses and then the third part is just applying perspective applying foreshortening into what you've already drawn what you've already built and this is pretty much wrapping everything together into one to make sure that you're maximizing the use of foreground and background elements in drawing just a simple character. So first off, we're going to take a look at how David Poser nails his idol characters. So anytime he draws simple character designs like this, there is always something that makes the characters really pop out and stand out. And that's because he uses a triangle as a base shape. And that's because the triangle is a shape of power. So whenever you use a triangle, in your work it makes the character look very heroic it gives the character a lot of power so that's something that you want to always include when you're doing a single character shot next thing we want to look at is the way he has structured this character as you can see the character has his shoulders going this way and his hips are going the other way now it's always good to do this when you want to counterbalance the way the character is moving his shoulders and whenever you do this you always have to think of the hips so when you have your character shoulders going this way you want to counterbalance that with the hips by making sure the hips are going in the opposite direction there are characters from max greg and as you can see even when you're drawing still characters characters that are not moving that are not in motion you're just trying to display the character display how cool the character is you can always make sure that your character feels like he's moving by using what's called a line of action and as you can see this character his line of action is going this way so it looks like this character is pushing forward towards this direction and then his shoulders are going this way and we have his hips going this way you always want to make sure you're counterbalancing the shoulders and the waist the pelvic making sure that the shoulders are going in one direction and the pelvic is going in the opposite direction and then your other shapes that you want to use on your character can also follow through with this line of action that's just it goes to show the direction where the character is going it also makes it feel like the character is actually moving is actually in motion now when we go further in this video you're going to see more examples that will really nail this now this is really important when you want to portray the essence of the character like when you have a villain like this you always want to make sure that you're using a triangle character to show that the character is really powerful look at how his torso is shaped in an upside down triangle and his line of action is going this way just to make that character look more upright and stable like he's really powerful it also doesn't matter what style you're drawing your characters if you're mostly using a simplified technique to draw your characters or you're drawing your characters with a more realistic approach it really doesn't matter all that matters is you're making sure that you're using these same principles and applying them in your work and it really doesn't matter if the character you're drawing is a humanoid character or a character that has animal features like this you always have to use the same principles and make sure that you're using line of action and you're counterbalancing the movements in the shoulders because the movement in the shoulders is really going to portray the poise of the character and make that character look more dynamic so you can always push the shoulder out towards us the viewers or make it look like the character is clinging back to himself by pulling the shoulders in pushing the shoulders into the body of the character and make it look like the character is a little bit feeble or is scared 
and you can make the character have broader shoulders looking more powerful now next thing we're going to look at is drawing characters in motion and this is really important when it comes to people that want to draw for comic books or you want to draw you know illustrations covers and all that especially if you want to maybe work in riot games and do splash covers or if you want to do comic covers as well this is really important so you want to always make sure that you're nailing the movements in your characters your characters look like they're really moving towards the viewer or the portraying a sense of movement depending on what your character is doing and someone that really nails this all the time is patrick brown so we're just going to study a couple of his images and see how he does that so first thing is you always notice a really strong line of action in his images that goes through the entire character pretty much showing you what direction the character is going and how his body is poised all the elements of the character are counterbalancing themselves so the shoulders are going in one direction and the body is going in the opposite direction and the legs are going in another direction now all this is really important when it comes to pushing different elements of your characters and making the pose more dynamic you always want to have a very strong line of action to show what direction that character is moving whenever you're trying to nail the pose of the character you really don't want to be paying attention to where you're placing the head or where you're placing the um small hands or feet you always want to be looking at the big shapes so make sure that you're pushing the line of action to show the motion where the character is going or to show whatever action that character is doing so if you have your character throwing a punch you want to make sure that your line of action is going through with that punch so you don't want to have your character throwing a punch this way and his body is maybe facing a wrong direction or curling downwards or something you want to make sure that your character's pose is going through with that action and then once you've nailed your pose then you can go about placing the head and making sure that the details in your hands and feet are right you always want to make sure that you're nailing that line of action where the character is facing or where the character is going through towards and also if you want to learn more of just dynamic posing nailing characters in motion you can check out patrick brown's class on skillshare skillshare is a really amazing platform where you can just learn new hobbies and learn new skills take classes from different tutors from different parts of the world and especially now where all of us are just in lockdown in our homes with a lot of time in our hands due to this epidemic it's a really good time to learn a new trick or learn a new skill so after this lockdown you would have learned some new skills that you can use to get jobs or just improve your work in general and it's pretty much easy you can just go on skillshare and just search for whatever class or whatever hobby that you want to learn or whatever skill you want to improve just check for different classes and you can sign up for two free months of premium membership but there's a catch it's only for the first 1000 people so you really have to hurry and click the link in the description below it will give you two free months of premium membership but just in case you miss the premium membership you can always just sign up it's pretty much less than a cup of coffee i think it's less than ten dollars so yeah you can sign up for less than ten dollars now the next thing we're going to look at is applying for shortening and perspective into your characters and someone that nails this perfectly well is john lamb if you don't know him you can check out his instagram he has a really fantastic instagram page with amazing ads it's always dynamic he's always pushing his characters body parts in different directions and is always using perspective and foreshortening as you can see the spider-man here he has his feet really close to us in the foreground and his body is way back in the mid ground with his hands in the background as well he's always doing this and this is something you really want to be doing in your work if you want to make sure that your drawings look very dynamic you really have to be nailing that foreshortening and nailing that perspective with your poses as well and when it comes to using foreshortening and perspective it really depends on the camera angle you're using for drawing your characters and where you're placing your character on your perspective grid so i created a simple one point perspective right here and it's a high angle so the camera is placed a little bit high above the character so you can see the character is lower right here and first things first we can notice is the character's knee and his head are pushed towards us and he has his hand 
push towards us as well so these are the parts of the character that are in the foreground and these are the parts of the character that are being foreshortened and pushing the rest of the character back into the background and mid ground so how you want to use foreshortening is to make sure you're obeying the rules of perspective and then you figure out what shapes of the character are going to be biggest and closest to the camera and then you use you make sure those shapes are bigger and make sure that they're overlapping the other shapes that are going back into perspective and as for this character we can see that his hand right here is a little bit closer to us and is overlapping his arm so you always want to make sure that you're overlapping one part of your character or one part of the body when you want to use foreshortening the next thing we can see is the character's head as well is overlapping the neck is overlapping the body and the body is going in this direction so you can see where the body is and even the legs of the character everything is going downwards and away from this big head shape right here now this image is a really perfect image because it contains pretty much everything we've discussed in this video he has his line of action going this way and this way for the legs going through this way for the other leg and going through this way for the arms and then he also has a little bit of foreshortening with the leg shape here going back against the rest of the body you can see his leg right here is closest to the camera followed by the arm which is closest to the camera as well and then the other parts of the body are just going back into the mid ground and background and this is something you always want to be doing making sure that you're using perspective to guide where you're placing your character and what parts of the character are being pushed forward and what parts of the character are going back into the background and if you're having a problem figuring out what parts of your character you're going to push to the foreground and what part you're going to leave in the background you can just set up a simple perspective grid to help you solve that problem and pretty much figure out how you're going to nail your character's pose and also use perspective to nail your foreshortening easy way to nail foreshortening is to make sure that you're overlapping shapes on top of other shapes so, so as you can see he has overlapped the shape of this character's foot on the leg right here and then he's overlapping this leg with the thigh and this is really obvious with this leg right here where the entire leg is overlapping the thigh right here and the thigh is overlapping the hips and the rest of the body so that's just a really simple and easy way for you to nail your foreshortening if you want to nail drawing foreshortening in your work just make sure you're overlapping shapes on shapes so you can overlap your hand over the body of the character you can overlap the legs over the chest of the character if your character is jumping just make sure that you're overlapping a certain part of your character over the other parts that will just that will just instantly make it look like you're using some foreshortening in your work and then you can also go extremes where you have the hand close to the camera and then the rest of the arm is just overlapped by that big hand and you have your character's face in the background that might be pretty hard so you might want to take some photo reference for that or maybe just go online go on pinterest and look for reference photos but it's always good to take your own reference photos trust me a really great image because it comprises of everything we have also talked about in this video you can see he has a very strong line of action the character is running and you see this long curve right here going through the entire character showing that motion and this leg going forward going this way to show that the character is moving and he also has this leg close to the camera to show that foreshortening and a little bit of perspective so to pretty much summarize everything into simple steps first thing you want to do is find the line of action for whatever pose you want to draw your character in next thing you want to do is add in a little bit of foreshortening or add in a little bit of perspective maybe bring the foot of the character close to the camera or his hands and then you can overlap certain shapes like the hand above the body or the leg against the body or something then you can begin to fill in your character using big shapes and just simple shapes to establish the shape language of the character then you can then proceed to drawing your head and filling out smaller details and applying clothing or whatever else whatever other accessories you want to draw on top of your character but first things first is you always want to make sure you are drawing that 
line of action in your character because the line of action is going to really portray and convey whatever pose you're trying to draw if you learned something from this video make sure you leave it a like and share it with your friends and subscribe to my youtube channel if you're new here and with that being said i will see you guys in the next video peace out Get over here.